Welcome back, all viewers of this recording. Uh, in the break for reevaluating this play, we went on review and went, went looked at the tapes. It looked like pretty clearly if Julie hadn't gone, Scotty would have been out at second base. Um, not really any ambiguity about that. So I will be getting a negative one run penalty, a one run penalty at the uh, end of this game. And in the meantime, get Scotty out on purpose. For a minute there, I was afraid that Maxwell had overthrown third, and I was about to score like two more runs, and that would have just been <laughs> a total snafu. But, all right, disappointing way to end, accidental cheesing. But, stay within the rules. It is essentially one nothing Royals. Uh, the perils of the grounder ball coming into play. Just didn't quite have enough to get that done. Dante Robinson now up. Chucky Flinders on the mound as normal. He had a very rough outing last week, last time, given up five runs before the All Star break, thanks to a lot of power ups. Uh, hoping to recover somewhat from that here and still have a solid season. I think Ace Wilson is out of reach at this point. He gave up nine runs in the first seven games, but we shall do what we can. Jimmy Rollins now up after Dante struck out. Bad. We had a three pitch strikeout for Dante Robinson. Nothing special there. One and two on Rollins. Just one in that more juice. Always nice to have in my back pocket. And get him with a heater. Second strikeout of the inning. Chucky tearing it up so far here. Gwen Sears now the hitter. Probably the most fearsome all-around player on offense on this team. Was she a first-round pick? I don't know. I can't remember how the draft went. No, 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 no. Maxwell was first-round pick. And then Gwen Sears was uh, second note. So yeah, Sears, Maxwell, Rollins, Dante, Veronica. Good score of speed on this team. And especially at this field, it's no wonder they've done solidly. No wonder they've done well in the first half of the season. Not an awe-inspiring team, but solid. And if there's and if uh, Chris has been getting a lot of power-ups with uh, to use with Ocampo, he's a great one to have those uh, be using those with. I originally picked Carlos with the Royals, but ultimately swapped to Chucky for the better arm. Anyway, Chucky strikes out the side. Three up, three struck out. Molly May leads off for the Royals and is going to go for a homer down the left field line in the unfortunate situation of being batting lead off with nobody on to drive in but oh well it is essentially it is two to nothing royals although we do have a one run penalty coming up and i strike out for the third time in four outs and seven batters uh that time i thought that was a uh, hook or maybe going towards the outer edge of the strike zone so i was changing my stance didn't realize where it was actually going until too late lena eng now up she has a small batting nerf. She's at six instead of seven today. No clue how she's going to hit as a result. But at least I'm doing decently on timing now. Yeah, the thing, thing is, I didn't swing at all in that last one. I was stance changing instead. Two strikes puts one in play. Go straight to Ocampa, though, even with his one strength arm, he's able to get that to base in time. Two outs, and not too likely to accomplish much here this inning. Chad Capel is now up. He's having a bad day. Got three running instead of five. So basically, his only hope is a home run down the line. Got close to one there, but it went just foul. He does have his full hitting ability. 60-something power, one contact, according to the detail stats breakdown. So in theory... One down the line is conceivable. Grounds out one to Rollins, though. Might have been safe uh, without the bad day. With it. Doesn't have a chance. So quiet. Second inning for the Royals. Still haven't really uh, settled into the groove yet. And we were at the weak part of our lineup. Bottom of the second. one nothing essentially. Sarah Maxwell now up. Fish's first round pick. Fortunately, her presence in the field has been virtually non-existent. That's the one thing with catchers. They can stop you from stealing bases, yes. But they're usually not going to do a lot to stop you from getting on base in the first place, which is more important. Veronica Lee now up. 
dishes again, just the gamut of high speed players. Question is on the AI and uh, on Chris's end, is the speed gonna be enough to balance for the arms on my team? Veronica swings and misses, Chucky's fourth strike out of the game. And Linda Potter, we're now at the less dangerous part of the fishes lineup. Linda and Esther and Ocampo and Jocinda. Not the scariest hitters, and none of them are fast either. Well, Ocampo's kind of fast, but he can't hit, so. Owen to the count on Potter. And swings and misses for strike three. Chucky dominating on the mound so far here. Struck out five of the first six Royals batters, and we are going into the third inning. It's 2 nothing. Keisha Phillips, a hitter. Going ahead and going grounder here. Grounds up the third baseline, just foul. Thought at first that was a beautiful single, if not home run, but... Couldn't quite put it in the fair territory. That actually would have been a beautiful one to swing at as well. I didn't, though. Oh, and two the count. And grounded straight towards the mound. This is a mound. Rollins gets it though and gets it to first just in time for the first out. He who lives by the grounder dies by the grounder, and this is why I often don't really prefer grounder balls as a strategy. For wing though, it's as good a choice as I've got. Not super high power. Wing Quan, 0 for 1 as I struck out with him in the first. Now to be a bit patient here. One and one to count. Looking for one on the outside edge so I can ground it down the third baseline. Something about like that. Potter's got it. Potter's got a good arm though and just barely gets swing out. I think we're gonna have to rethink this grounder ball strategy. Too bad it took me three innings to realize that. But two straight grounders couldn't get it in the gap and that's easy outs. This is one reason why I don't really like grounder ball that much. Whenever I try it, it just doesn't work that well. Anyway, Chucky Flinder now the hitter. Trying to get something going here. He struck out after a lengthy battle in the first. Owen oh, 2 is a count on him now. Grounds that one. That's going to go foul. Ouch, Chucky takes a face plant. That's not going to be great for his stamina either. Still Owen oh, 2. I'd swing at that one, otherwise we'd probably strike three. Unfortunately, that's a slow grounder straight to first. Easy out for Jacinda. So three up, three grounders, three out in the third. After a solid start to the game, the Royals have slowed down quite a bit. This has been a quick not latest couple innings. Unfortunately, Chucky's power-up slots are all filled now. Didn't get a more juice, which statistically I think is an improbable result, to say the least. So I'm gonna have to hope we have no big stamina events now. Strikes out Jacinda looking. Chucky continues his tear. Six strikeouts so far. And it's only the third inning. If I can score just one more run, you know, I have at least a two-nothing. And then if my team really shuts down Chris, we have a shot. We'll see. I do still have three more innings to do work, and that'll start feeling like a lot more if I start having a success. And Dunkles, I very likely base it to start off the fourth. Carlos with a low line drive to Keisha, who drops it, but is able to recover in time. Second out, and Esther French is a hitter. Actually, I'm not sure who the... I think I think Ocampo is a designated power-up user. Yeah, for Chris. Esther was picked in the ninth round, but then traded to the Fishes for Chucky, who was actually picked in the eighth round. So for the purposes of power-ups, Chucky then became a ninth rounder, and Esther became the eighth rounder. In any case, an easy out there. Chucky is perfect, 3-3, three, three, with fifth, six strikeouts. Good candidate for Pitcher of the Week so far. Now let's see if the Royals can get some scoring done. Julie Dunkel leading off. One for one with a triple. Not going for a big hit here, just going for something to get on base. That'll do the job quite nicely. Just need to put the ball in play. And her blazing speed will do the rest. 
Scotty also, I think, is still a good choice for grounder because line drive is not going to clear the infield either. Just need a properly dinky grounder that gets just far enough for Max will not field it. <clears throat> That's a gold standard here. And that should do the trick. Takes its time getting... Oh no, but she guns Julie out at second. I wasn't... I assumed Julie would be fine. I was fo totally focused on Scotty. And Julie is out. Scotty is safe, but on a fielder's choice. Not a great price to pay. Vincent now up, got into the great uh, cheesing fiasco and to end the first inning. Going for a decent line drive down the line, but swings early and misses for the first pitch. Fouls the second one off. Takes ball one. So a pretty quick game so far for the Royals. I don't think I'm super focused tonight. Um, I haven't been getting a lot done, but it hasn't been super frustrating either. And that one was low. Should have taken the cue, did not. Vincent swings and misses for another strikeout. Fourth of this game. Striking out a lot. Not so great for my chances. Molly Mays up. I'm actually going to use line drive here. I think power is not especially likely to be a lot better. Ooh, and a nice hit off the pole there. Sadly foul, but it was at least a satisfying hit. But anyway, yeah, I don't think power is that likely at this field to pay extra dividends with someone as slow as Molly anyway. I think line drive was just as good of a chance of hitting. Success, and Esther blasts a fireball down the middle. No time to react to that, and that ends the fourth inning. Very effectively. Good one by Esther. So, fourth ends. Royals with a hit and a fielder's choice, but no more runs. Continuing to be uh, pretty ineffective since the first inning. It is still, with penalties applied, one nothing. Dante swings and misses. Chucky collects his seventh strikeout of the game. I'm not sure how high I can push the strikeout counter with him, but we're gonna see. Chucky was passed up by um, Christina Beatty of the Wombats for the NL League Leader in strikeouts last week. Definitely now the goal is to reclaim that title. And with seven strikeouts and ten out, out of ten outs total, he's got pretty good odds. Rollins struck out in the first inning. It's now 0-2 for him, and swings and misses for strike three. Another K for Chucky, who is making up for the last game with a vengeance. And that brings up Gwen Sears. Swings and misses for strike one. That one on the upper edge, and that pays off in the Hits, wing, gets to the ball, but cannot make the play. But throws to second, and she's tagged out, so Gwen too eager, and that preserves the perfect game, where otherwise she would have had an easy single. No hits for the Fishes through four. It is one nothing Royals. Again, going for at least one more run, so I have a chance of winning without the Fishes losing to the AI. Attempting zigzag, but I was able to correctly identify that as being way outside Lena's range. Esther starting to kill her. Kill herself with power-ups now, and the big freeze fooled me. I saw it coming, but still didn't process it until too late. Lena hits a towering one towards right, but it doesn't have that much range. Should have waited for one to hit the left. Veronica catches it. It'll be easy out. One out. But yeah. That fireball to end off last inning, and then two power-ups to start off this one. Esther's probably getting pretty tired now. We'll see what happens once she gets subbed off the mound. One and those account on Chad Capel. Two and zero. Chad almost singled in the second inning, but his bad day and speed was enough to prevent him from. Esther now cannot hit the strike zone to save her life. It seems. Three and zero. Chad is not swinging at this next one. Strike one. 
three and one is a count. And, ooh, I thought that was high for ball four, but nope. Barely in the strike zone, so it's now a full count on Capel. What next? We're taking that one. It is in the strike zone. Hoping for the walk, but instead, my sixth strike out of the game. Esther French is doing a pretty bang-up job herself tonight. And that brings up Keisha Phillips. No one on. Two out. Let's try power. And see if we can get a great, a great multi-base hit here. Keisha was my contender in the home run derby this season, and she made it to the third round where she only narrowly lost. Seven home runs to six in round three. So I had normally don't use power a lot with her. Gonna maybe try to start doing that more in the back half of the season. Still not with two strikes, though. Line drive instead. One towards short. Gets past Rollins. Unfortunately, Gwyn snags it. So it'll only be a single for Keisha. One on now and two outs for Wayne Kwan. Grounder didn't work so well for him last time. Gonna try it again. Hope that with a leadoff lead and going to second base, Keisha can create the needed distraction. Maxwell brains Rollins at second base. Esther's gonna be coming off the mound any time now, I'm sure, after that fireball especially. Lanky grounder. Esther does not feel it. Rollins does, and tries to gun it to Ocampo. Ocampo can't handle it. Almost gets away, but again, Gwen Sears gets to it. Ocampo with an error sends a ball into center, and that lets Keisha grab third, so now it's runners on the corners. Two outs. Chucky Flinder up. Unfortunately, I do not have a power up. Uh, this is interesting. Linda Potter comes on the mound. Which means the gassed Esther French is now on third base. Right then. Oh, oh, and it gets passed. That is going to be three extra bases, folks. Called out of play as Maxwell burn, uh, barrels it past the tired Esther French. Esther French at third is now a big weakness in this defense. And good grief! The virtual version of Chris is just going all out on Linda here. A big freeze and then two fireballs to start off. And I'm sure her tank is empty as well now. Inside for ball two. Two and two the count. But yeah, ground is for third base. Much more viable now. And there you go. Linda Potter lasted all four pitches before she was too tired. And now it's Veronica Lee on the mound. That makes a new... Uh, A new weak spot in the right field as well. Ocampo lets that one roll past him, which is a single for Chucky. Wing comes to score. It's now 4 nothing Royals. And uh, all those strikeouts coming back. You know, that's why intentional strikeouts are banned in this league. They can come in in a big way and win. You're just rough. Having a rough time like I am here. You can make a big difference. Julie smashes a zigzag over to right. That is going to be... Off the wall. Dante does get it, unfortunately, so no runs will be scored on this play. But it is a double for Julie, and that gives me a power-up. If I make it around the lineup to Chucky again, he will have a screamer to play around with. But yeah, Fish is suddenly starting to crumble as they kill themselves with power-ups. Esther's shot, Linda's shot, so now Veronica is pitching. We have weak spots at third and in left. That is not going to, whoops, not going to make it past Gwen, so she prevents Chucky from scoring. That time, though, I know uh, Scotty would have been safe anyway. So no, no question of cheese there in my mind. Vincent Sweet now up. Grounder is an interesting prospect, but a grounder to third. All it has to do is land in Esther's glove at third base, and that's the third out right there, so... Gonna try to hit one in the gap instead. Fouls one off. 0-2, oh then with the bases loaded, nobody out. Let's see what Vincent can do. I will say one strength of this Fishes team, uh, I know now from playing against them here, their outfield is good for this field. 
They are very good at raining the ball in before it gets too far. Pop up towards left, but Gwen is there, and she's going to catch it for the third out. Good rally by the Royals. Uh, that ultimately results in two runs, which is pretty good for this team. And it'll be... I'll need to get through five hitters with just two outs if we want to have Chucky and the Screaming Line Drive come into play in the sixth. Unfortunately, from all the rushing I did for him, Chucky is a bit gassed here. With no more juice, that could be a problem. Sarah Maxwell, the hitter. You better bet, though, Chucky's going to stay on the mound as long as he can. Try to pad up these strikeout numbers. And Maxwell takes one looking. Strikeout number nine for Chucky. Continuing to dominate on the mound. Veronica Lee is now up. The last really threatening hitter in the Fish's lineup. If we can get past her, I think we can get the Perfecto. Unfortunately, she hits one perfectly in the gap. That is going to be a single. No Perfecto tonight. Almost straight to Chucky, but got just past him. But Linda Potter is now up. And she is exhausted. Who knows, this might even be a good double play opportunity if she puts it in play. She's not going anywhere fast, I know that much. Might not be able to put it in play though. Oh, and two is a count. Chucky with not a lot of control here. But it is enough. Linda swings and misses. Chucky's 10th strikeout of the game. And there are two outs on the fishes. Jocinda Smith is hitting. It's the first one, line up towards short, but Vincent is there and he gloves it for the third out. One hit, but still no runs for the fishes in the fifth. We go to the sixth inning. It is with penalties in play. Three nothing. Royals are looking for another rally here in the sixth. And Molly and May will lead that effort, and I should have known that was a big freeze. I should have known. Gets me, though, for strike one. Veronica tiring herself out as well. And with Linda in right field, this uh, Fish's outfield is not as intimidating as it was. Inside for ball one. One and two's account on Molly. Trying to avoid a strikeout at this point, it is definitely not to my advantage to get more. Molly has struck out twice this game. Has not had a great season. Maybe tomorrow, maybe next week will be her breakout game. Two strikes, pops one up into the center of the field. Veronica gets under it, should be able to catch that. No, she drops it, and Molly is safe at first base. That brings up Lena Egg. So now the question, now the trick is to successfully avoid a double play here with nerfed Lena at bat, nerfed Chad on deck. Hopefully Lena can get one in the gap for an extra base hit. That would be the best case scenario. One and one, the count as Lena fouls one off. Inside for ball two, walks I will also accept. Outside for ball three, three and one. Decent chance for a walk here with Lena. Now Veronica's gonna throw two strikes in a row. Of course. Gonna take that one. Hope for a better one. Full counts on Lena Ang. And that is outside for ball four. Lena takes the base. There's two on, nobody out for the Royals. We just have to safely get past Chad Capel, who's having a bad day to the tune of three running. See if he can put one in the gap or draw a walk. Strike one. But Keisha Phillips is on deck, so if we can safely get past Chad, uh, things are looking good here for the Royals. High for ball one. One and one the count. And I see an opportunity. Place it left field. Unfortunately, Gwen is able to make it over. That's not going to escape her. Molly is out at third, but Lena and Chad are both safe. Two on, one out. Keisha Phillips a hitter. Let's get a good one here, folks. Two on, one out. Home run derby, third place matter is up. 
Mine's one. Goes straight to Vili. Fortunately, Linda is, or Esther is too tired to get Chucky out at second. Unfortunately, Lena is out at third, which means there are now two outs. We need something really good here. If Wing gets on base, we have Chucky on deck. Chucky has a screaming line drive. So if Wing manages to get on base by any means, then we're scoring more runs here. But Wing does not have a lot of power. Chad needs to make it to third safely. Might be a tricky task. One and one the count. I would so much love another walk here. High for ball two. This is tense. Corner ball for strike two. It's two and two now on Quan. It's going to have to swing at the next one in the strike zone. And I think that was just high, and Wing couldn't put his bat on it, so... Strikeout number seven for the Royals on the game. And while some of the strikeouts might have fueled the two runs we scored in the fifth, this one squarely gets in the way of us scoring more runs. On the whole, I think all those strikeouts did uh, do more harm than good. Not my day as far as hitting goes, but oh well. So, Royals' final total, once the penalty is applied, is going to be three runs. The question is, can we hold the pitches to nothing? We have only the slimmest of chances at winning. If our AI can hold Chris down to two runs or less, it's possible. But fishes, I think, are well built for this field. I think they're going to score more than two runs. They just need a couple of ones to get in the gaps, and then the speed will carry them the rest of the way. Ocampo did strike out for Chucky's 11th strikeout on the game. Esther French is now up, and she is completely gassed. She's not going to be much of a threat even if he does put the ball in play. Grounder straight to short. Vincent fields it ably. That is the second out. Fishes down to their last out, and it is Dante Robinson. Can try to get the complete game here with Chucky. He's given up one hit. Struck out 11. He's tired, no chance for more juice, and ran his heart out of the fifth inning. Ultimately paid off. He was able to score. And Dante takes strike two. All right, 0-2. Just need one more strike, and this game is history. Going for the freezer. Doesn't even try to swing it. It's strike three. And that will end this game. Final score tonight, Royals three. Fishes nothing. Let's go ahead and take a look at our stats for the game. Well, around the league, Pirates beat the Melonheads. That's not a good sign for me. Rockies put up 13 runs as AIs in the around the league. That would be quite the upset if something like that happened in the real league. Statistics for the game. Uh, let's see. A lot of players did decently here. Nobody went super above and beyond. Uh, player of the game here, though, has to be Chucky Flinder. One for three with a single that batted in a run and on the mound. Complete game shutout. One hit. 12 strikeouts. One of the most dominant pitching performances I've ever had the pleasure of being able to record. Lena, unfortunately, struggled quite a bit from her bad day. She did draw a walk, but otherwise was 0 for 2. Everyone got on base at least once. And Keisha, Julie, and Scotty all prospered on the whole. So it was a solid game. Um, I think if I had a bit more focus and struck out a bit less, it could have been a real bang-up job. As it is, I have a small chance of winning. Probably not going to, again, but... At least it was fun, and I didn't get super frustrated. Next week, we are continuing the road trip. We are heading to Scrapco Field to take on the Crazy A's. Almost all the back half of the schedules against really strong teams here. A's are no exception, and so... Uh, probably going to be a blowout in Crazy's favor, but... We'll see how that goes. Until then, thanks everybody for watching. See you later.